Hey everybody, it's Saturday night. It is December the 9th and I am just chilling with my husband after a long day of work for him. He's got to be a spotlight up there, uh, a glaring, glaring spotlight. Um, and he said that he looks like a big cop. Uh, so I'm doing a video call with Steven because we do, we do many video calls. Steven, tell everybody... Oh, oh, that's better. Oh, that's much better. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He turned that spotlight off. See, uh, tell everybody where you are right now. I'm in El Campo, Texas. Did you say El Campo? Well, that's it. And where's that at in Texas? Where we all camp in Texas. Ha, <laughs> ha. Uh... Be more specific. Yeah, I am 84 miles from uh, Houston on Highway 50 South. Houston on in Highway 59. Highway 59, 84 miles out of Houston. So I want to. So um, I want to talk about what Stephen and I just talked about. We had a very interesting conversation, and I told him I said that he needed to make a video, and he said, "No, you make the video. You make the video." Um, so I'm making it from the perspective that I'm filming Stephen um, while he's sitting there in Texas. Um, it's seven o'clock p.m. here. Are we on the same time zone? Uh, yep. So it's seven o'clock for you. Six fifty-seven. Oh well, seven o'clock. So Stephen had a very, very fascinating experience today, uh, and so much so that. Oh, it had a fascinating experience. Oh, dude. So much so that I wanted him to talk to you about it, and and he and he told me that I needed to make the video. So, I didn't think that was. You didn't think that what happened to you? Uh, anyway, instead of beating around the bush, I'll go ahead and tell you what Ruthie wants to make me laugh. So I was coming up Highway 59 out of Laredo. And uh, anyway, I, so I come up on the border crossing. There was a pretty young woman who was either half black and half Mexican, is what I think I saw. Really pretty, she's in her 20s. And then uh, the fairly tall, two mystic guys were with her. And they had her doing all everything. So she was waving me up, told me to stop. And uh, I opened up my door. So the whole inside of the truck was exposed. She walked right up to the opening of the door and said, Good morning to you, sir. And I said, Well, good morning, ma'am. She says, is there anybody other than you in the truck? And I said, it was just me and the Holy Spirit. She said, oh, wow. I'm glad you're having a good morning, sir. Well, I'm going to have to get up and look, look behind you there to see if there's any, anything in the truck that I need to be aware of. But, well, you just get up there and look all you want. Tell me like what you see. And so she got up. And I leaned forward and she looked over my back. Looked around, she looked really well. She got back down, she said, this very nice trick you got there. And I said, well, thank you. And I said, she said, well, you have a nice morning. I said, nice morning, ma'am. I went to close the door, she goes, oh, wait a minute. What? And then the dog, she, they want to run the dog around the truck. Oh, okay. So, for a minute there, I was thinking, oh, maybe a Mexican jumped under my trailer, but <laughs> the, dog <laughs> the dog didn't come up with anything, so it way behind to have a great day. And so there's my story, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, so other than that, I drove up here, I got water, so I was in to take a bath. Uh, I got some groceries. I didn't cook the steak, because they wanted $37 for ribeye. I'm paying on $37 for ribeye. So anyway, so I had a ham steak. It was a lot cheaper. <laughs> right. But I, 
I don't eat ham, ham very often because it's got a lot of sodium. It makes my blood pressure go up. But you said that the lady, yeah, like, you said that the lady patted your truck like a horse is wrong. Oh yeah, well, that's another thing. But she was when the guys were running the truck, the dog around the truck. I watched her in my mirror. She walked to the back of the truck, patted the fenders like you would pat the backside of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's unusual and interesting. Yeah, she was patting a big elephant on the butt, I guess. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so they they were clearly looking for passengers. I I, a lot of people like this truck. I really don't care for it. But, you know, people can always tell me that it's a really cool looking truck. But, but anyway, I guess she was just. I mean, I keep it clean. I try to keep it looking nice. That's about all I can do. Man, but, yeah, you know, it is an old Freightliner. I'm not into Freightliners. But classics are pretty cool trucks. This is black, silver frame plane, and the fenders. So, yeah, I guess it is kind of cool. So, people, when they see it, they always tell me it's a nice truck. Well, she liked it well enough to pat it, to pat it like a dog. Wow. See you in there, big freight liner. That's funny. So so every time you go down that way they, they, they check the big trucks for illegals then? Uh not going down there, but when you come back up. Oh well yeah, when you're coming up you don't get checked unless you're going over the border going south. But when you're coming back up you'll get checked down border crossing. Okay. Well, that's just pretty exciting, uh, and uh, I wonder why uh, I wonder why she was the one doing all the talking. It's probably new. Probably what it is. And they were just making her le learn the job. That's right. So, uh, tell me about the cows that you're parked next to. The cows, the moo. Well, they're not really cows. A corral? Not, a corral? <laughs> it is a corral, but there's another name for it. So uh, do you do you think anyway? Do you think that you would ever want to I, I know at one time you were looking at the possibility of being a cattle hauler. Do you think you'd ever do that? Well, I went down and talked to King was it King's cattle? King's livestock. Yeah, I went down to King's livestock. And sit down and talk to a woman for a couple of hours. She told me what uh, driving, uh, hauling cattle entails and everything. She's telling me that when you load the cattle, the number one thing about the cattle is that they're going to lose weight. The longer under on the truck, the more weight they're going to lose. And they sell them by the weight. And so you, when you put them on, uh, on that you put them in the wagon, you have to get where you're going. There's no screwing around. You just have to go. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, and this sounded kind of wild and crazy to me. <laughs> when you're running halfway across the country, or all the way across the country, and you can't get any sleep or anything, you got cattle. But anyway. So that's not the job for you. By the way, talking about how you're not a young man anymore, um, I love your beard. I, I love how you got like a skunk uh, tail in your beard. Um, well, that's not a good way to label somebody. <laughs> all I want to think of, I got a skunk under my nose. <laughs> hey, I got a skunk under my nose. What is it, your mouth? Yes. I'm going to knock you out with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant that you had 
have the silver on both sides. You have like the black. You had your mustache is black, and you got a black middle, and then you got silver on each side. I can come up with another way to explain it other than a gun. <laughs> besides that, gun would be opposite. Oh yeah, black. that's. Oh, yeah, that's right. A skunk would be just the opposite. It'd be white between black. That's right. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I just, I really like your beard. I like, it's very distinguished. It's very manly. It's um, like Sean Connery. You look like Sean Connery. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I thought I, thought I looked like Stephen Howard. Oh, well, that too. So... Anyway, well, that's my hubby's news, and so we're just checking in. I'm here on the home front in Kentucky, and Stephen's in Texas, and so we often make video calls. We often talk to each other several times a day on video, so... Um, uh, Nate, I came over here and dropped a bunch of cattle off. They're over there mooing. Yeah. Uh, they're over there mooing. They're over there mooing. They're over there mooing. Well, if they don't, I guess you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to sleep if you have the cattle over there. Uh, yeah. All right, Stephen. We'll sign off, and we'll and we'll tell everybody to have a pleasant sleep. I love you, Steven.